Hey crew, we're going to set up the uh, navigation today on our left panel. Really some insane stuff I figured out over the weekend we can do with uh, d duplicate panels and horizontal collapsing and using simple elements to uh, get quite a few uh, devices displays covered by the same layout. Absolutely insane. So today we're going to be doing the navigation. I've been doing the same type of navigation for three, four years. Um, and it still works, it's still the best that I've found. So let's go ahead and hook up our uh, left bar here to navigate using page parameters. There are two types of resets uh, that you can consider. There's like a soft reset when I click here. These change, the page changes, the layout of the page and the content can change. However, um, it doesn't actually refresh, hard refresh, which is something like this. Uh, where you can see the page changing. So what we want is to use that soft navigation to sort of reset our layout uh, without doing necessarily the hard refresh. And in Bubble, what that means, if you have a workflow, you can go to page, um, and go to page is a soft reset if it's the same page as you're currently on, and a hard reset if it's a different page. So we're setting ourselves up to um, cover Navi Nab with this uh, reusable element we created in the previous video. We're going to go ahead and put a go to page to Navi Nab, and if you're triggering from Navi Nab, it should be a soft refresh. But we're going to send additional parameters. We're going to send P, and we're going to send the current cells nav items display as well as the key, just like we're doing here. We're sending finance, we're sending NFTs, etc. And if you do that, then you can. Uh, also do it for the text because if you only click on the icon it'll navigate people try to click on the text it won't work might as well add it in uh, we have to add it to the text because they're not contained in a group the other way we could do it is select both and then group into a row container and then click on the entire group and have only one workflow I would rather add another workflow than add another visual element uh, for computational uh, performance and that's why we have the two workflows instead of the additional group which would allow us to click only on the group itself and have one workflow i hope that makes sense i don't even know if it's worth bringing up just build it so that it works is uh, essentially what i think so now when we click on these it should be actually navigating to the correct page security markets nfts you'll see that up here and now we can add our visual elements so the shape which was supposed to light up when um, we navigate to it, we can actually grab that from the data. Let's grab P. And if it is um, the parent group's nav items display, so we clicked on it to get there, then we can make this visible. We're going to copy this and we're going to add it to the image paste condition because when it is that items display, we want the image source to be uh, parent group's nav items. I uh, can't even talk. Parent groups, nav items, image selected, right? And then here also is hovered, or maybe if we get parameter P is this display. So we clicked on it, now it's this one, it should be red, right? Let's take a look really quickly. If all of our selecting visuals worked, there you go. There's, it is filled in. It's red when it's selected already, and then the other ones still hover. Pretty cool. Okay, and now what happens when we go on mobile? Let's turn it on. There it is. And the only thing is that we don't necessarily want this uh, to show up. It looks kind of weird. And we definitely want all of our text to show up when the page is smaller than our breakpoint. In the previous videos, we were doing breakpoints at 768. I was going to do a three breakpoint rule, but I think that we're going to set it up for an, um, tablet and mobile the same way, and then uh, for desktop over a certain width. I'm going to pick the breakpoint of 900 now. We were using breakpoints at uh, 768 last time. We're going to shift that over. So when we have the text and the page width is uh, bigger than or equal to, uh, sorry, smaller than or equal to 900. It should only be smaller than. Then we're going to go this element is visible true as well because um, we want this, <clears throat> sorry, we want this on mobile when we actually bring in the title 
uh, sorry, the, the menu, we want all of the options to sort of show up. And the next thing we're going to do is remove this um, shape when the page is larger than 900. And these conditionals are hierarchical moving downwards. So the last one will override the prior ones. So we want when get when page width is smaller than 900, we want this to be um, invisible, regardless of whether it's supposed to be visible or not. Since it's lower, it'll it should override that condition. So even if we're on markets on mobile, the line won't show up. Whereas on desktop, the line will show up. Okay, easy as that. And next videos, we're going to turn this into uh, the whole thing into a repeat, uh, reusable element that we can actually stick this entire thing inside of um, so that we get this view on mobile. Oh yeah, stay tuned. We're gonna be doing that next video. Hope this was useful.